Hello and welcome to Let's Try It. This is going to be a toughie. <laughs> this uh, this is Avorian, and Avorian is a beast of a game. It's um, it's a lot. It's basically a single player MMO. Although you can also play it multiplayer, so you could actually play it like an MMO. But it's um, a fully open sandbox space sim uh, with trading, mining. Um, station building, ship building. It's got a very customizable uh, ship builder um, editor. Like the ship editor is is a lot. You can see, I mean, all of these stations are built with the in-game uh, editor. As far as I can tell, I don't think that they're using any techniques or tricks that uh, you can't apply yourself. This is a ship that I have designed myself and I'm currently headed towards a uh, station that had, or not a station, but a section or sector that has solar power plants. We're gonna do some trading so I can show that off. We're gonna be doing some trading, some mining, some ship combat, so you can get kind of a, a good uh, gamut of, of what this game offers. So this is a, the Golden Torment Delta that I'm heading to. Uh, instead of hyperspacing towards there, I'm gonna go ahead and check out there's likely a gateway here that'll go straight towards there. gate to golden torment delta i believe is it so i'm going to double click that that's going to focus it and there it is right over there so i'm going to go ahead and use that gate this game's got a lot of quirks and in fact i've had this game for quite a long time and not played it because i bounced off of it pretty hard the first time i tried it i was like oh this is way too complicated for me and then uh, having tried it again i was like oh it's actually not as complicated as i thought and in fact it could even do to have a little bit more nuance in certain areas but that being said have having played it for a few hours most of that time in the ship editor i can heartily uh, recommend it um it's actually a very good game with a lot of depth as well um and some gamification if that you know, it makes sense. There's some things that kind of remind me of some ARPGs like uh, Diablo-esque mechanics, but uh, we'll get to those in a sec. So we are here in the Golden Torment Delta. Uh, I've been tasked with the mission of collecting some energy cells. Uh, now I have a guide open in my uh, other window that tells me that I can get energy cells from a solar power plant, but uh, this is one of those things that uh, when you when you first start the game, you're gonna feel kind of simultaneously over and underwhelmed because on one end it's like wow, there's all of these cool mechanics, but like how do I take advantage of them all? Like how do I do trading? Um, the answer is uh, subsystems, and it took me a little while to f figure this out. Hold on a second. I guess I did. I select the there. There it is over there. Uh, the answer is sub six, six, uh, system. So uh, your ship, basically, your ship size dictates a certain number of subsystems that you can have. And you can look at these kind of like, um, th they're modifications for your ship. Uh, an in interesting mechanic I like is that you can either install them temporarily or install them permanently. You actually get a sizable bonus for installing them permanently. That, uh, it's kind of a misnomer because it says permanent, but um, actually if you're near a kind of a engineer station you can take them off again so it's only permanently until you uh, enter uh, a specific kind of space so don't don't be afraid to install things permanently i was and i kind of kicked myself later for not having committed to certain subsystems but anyway um if you want to get into like trading if you want to get into mining even if you want to get into things like combat you're going to need subsystems they're going to dictate how many turrets you can have things like weapons as well as things like uh mining lasers and uh even things like trade so like what kind of uh information you have including things like station information and what kind of things they sell uh from system to system not that i can't see clearly that this station sells energy cells of which i will buy 100. um i believe that's gonna check that now sell the i, I was uh, supposed to sell the or buy these for less than 40 credits per unit i didn't succeed that but that's fine now we're gonna find and sell the this to a station um optional sell them for more than 55 per unit now again i don't have the sus subsystems available that tell me just basically 
you know trade routes that are available so i'm going to go ahead and look in my guide here at what kind of uh what kind of plants basically or what kind of stations like energy cells and there's actually a huge list of these so this is a pretty good first thing to trade in um so let's go ahead and uh, energy cells uh looks like solar cells like them a uh, solar cell factories i should say looks like most factories like them um but specifically i'm looking at anti-grav unit factories and the reason i'm looking at that one is because i know that I have explored enough of these uh, systems to know that I have a couple of anti-grav unit factories. This map, by the way, is a lot smaller. It's way bigger than than just what I'm looking at. Uh, and in fact, it's a this is kind of misleading a little bit because I have like expanded this map not from just ex exploration, but by buying a few maps so you can actually like discover systems that way. Um, but if you'll see here, like this says 95, 400, that's just the coordinates of that system. Um, if I actually want to know how many stations are there and what they like and, you know, stuff like that, uh, the specifics of that system, I would have to actually travel there, or I would have to buy a really expensive map that basically gives me all of that information. But back to anti-grav unit factories, let's go ahead and find one of those. Let's look at, yeah, okay, so this one here, Unforgiving Honor Beta. Um, that is a system that has an anti-grav unit factory in it. Um, but is there a closer one? It looks like there is. I'm just looking if there's even closer. But this one here, uh, Ogonite or Ogonite Judgment 1. Um, I can use the gateways to do it, but sometimes it's just easier to go ahead and enter coordinates. I've, I've actually gotten into trouble by not doing this because uh you can waste a lot of time trying to figure out oh, which gateway is it this is one of those things i kind of wish was better and maybe there is a subsystem that i just haven't discovered yet that basically tell you like while you're traveling to uh you know a place that you've marked maybe it just tells you which gateway you're supposed to go into but i i find it it is a little bit difficult to just like figure that out so sometimes it's just easier to hyperspace because you can just enter the coordinates and then you're the game will automatically set you up a couple of jumps and if you've built your ship correctly or at least if you've built it well um then you should have plenty of energy to make these kind of jumps without having to wait around too long so this can can be very easy uh, but this is what space trucking looks like or what it can look like you, I, honestly you can build your ship even better than i have in terms of like making it fit for carrying car cargo i've made a very much jack of all trades ship because i like to do a little bit of everything i like variety um so i like to do sh some ship combat i like to do some mining i like to do some trading all right now i'm doing some trading just to show that off because you know what um i've, I've said this before with space games but um i think that the like it, it's it's a difficult thing to make a space game. They have to check a lot of boxes and all of those boxes have to feel good, I think. Um, it's not enough for a game to have trading. It's, uh, you know, it, that trading has to be interesting. And I, I really do want to highlight that I think Avorian does do everything well. Does it do it the best? I wouldn't say so necessarily, but I think it's good enough. And the fact that it does have so much and like full ship customization is uh it's kind of unheard of and i i find it honestly very difficult to find a ship or, or space sim game that is compelling in like all regards so to find one that is even close is like wow that, you know good job and ship customization like usually ship customization is like a very much a cherry on top and uh this game does it well it does it very well you have a lot of creativity and how you build your ships and those ships have to actually kind of functionally make sense um as per the parameters of this game as in terms of like actual space flight it's a little bit of a you know it's it's a little bit star trek about it you know it's very much engage the inertial dampeners and uh, make sure to flip on the hyperdrive thing you know like uh it's not sci -fi, it's not hard sci-fi it's it's fun sci-fi it's you know uh in my opinion but uh it still makes sense within the parameters of the game so let's go ahead and i really appreciate this feature by the way that these docks have a little tractor beam so you don't have to spend a lot of time uh like 
getting close to it there's no docking minigame would it be cool if there is one sure but uh, because of the breadth of customization i don't think it would be very feasible or add much to the game so we're going to trade goods um it looks like these guys are buying energy cells at 56 per which is actually pretty good um but uh their stock is actually quite high they have 1755 out of 1800 so that means i can only sell 45 to them so we'll sell those to them and then we're going to move on to uh, a different station so let's go ahead and move on to uh, maybe that honestly there might be another one here this was the anti-grav unit factory m there is another one anti-grav unit factory s so let's go check that check out that one as well um flying feels pretty good it's got quirks uh that you have to be aware of and i honestly am not even the best person to fully explain those quirks um you can see i i have to do a little bit of finicky navigating with my ship because it's very much made to go forward um stopping is uh is another thing altogether uh so they actually they're 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 they could definitely use some more energy cell stocks so we're gonna go ahead and sell those uh you must be oh whoops i'm not docked we're whoops yeah it's not enough to be close you gotta actually dock let's uh get close to that dock over there i love the design of these stations they they're very readable and they've got like just enough like grieveling to feel complex you know what i mean so let's trade. We're going to trade those. We'll sell those. We've completed our mission. Mission accomplished. The rules of the trade. Also want to highlight this, that the game does have missions. Um, I find it that a lot of space games will just kind of rely on its sandboxiness to carry itself. I, I feel like this game does a good job. And then look at that. They've given me a advanced trading subsystem um, for completing that, which is quite nice. Let's see what that does. This one shows prices of goods, price deviations, trade route detection. So that's actually a really nice, uh, quite quite valuable subsystem. Um, what would I want to get rid of though? I quite like a lot of these things. Deep scan range, I guess I could get rid of this one, but I think that is on permanently. Um, permanent installation bonus active, yeah. So uh, I guess I'll show this off just because I, I wouldn't mind installing that trade system. Uh, you have, uh, I have, well, I have a home base or a home system. This is where all things are kind of um, treated with a sense of, you know, family. You're, you're given the family discount. You can repair your ship for free. Um, you are considered like a favored member so you can use the stations uh like pretty much you know gratis and um and so i come back here and also the the important part is that there's both a shipyard and a system station meaning that you can uh swap things around if you need be so this thing here is the thing we care about let's let me see if i can actually select it equipment dock that's the thing i care about we want to dock with that so that i can um take off one of my subsystems after this, I'll show off mining a little bit. Um, mining is mining. Uh, is it interesting, or at least is it more interesting than like totally tedious? Yes. Uh, there's more going on than you might think at first glance, which is kind of nice. Ooh, we're uh, drifting a little bit. Yeah, I drift a little bit. Hold on. Oh, yeah. That's the nice thing about those tra tractor beams is they pretty much stop you dead right away. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, that was close. Almost crashed right into the station. In fact, I dinged it a little bit. It's okay, we are docked. All right, so let's go ahead and... Um, oh, I guess while we're docked, let's go ahead and hit I. Go to our substation. So I kind of want to get rid of this radar bonus. So we're going to take that off. And then I'm going to put this on. What is a permanent installation? Uh, economy over you, galaxy map, yes. Economy strain, scan range, yes. So let's throw that on there. Actually, let's install it permanently. It'll give you a warning, and I actually think that warning is doing the game a disservice a little bit because um, it makes you think that you're going to destroy this thing, but it, you're only going to destroy it if you're not at a equipment station 
when you uninstall it. So that's one of those things that actually kind of scared me off a little bit. So now we have a trading over overview, and this is actually something I've never looked at. Um, this is new, and I, I guess this is something I want to highlight with this game is that uh, in the certain areas like trading, like mining, like combat, the game at very first glance, when you just get a ship, when you just start playing the game, is going to feel very bare bones. It's going to feel really like, oh man, like I really wish I had this basic feature. Like, for instance, I really wish that I could tell which of these asteroids actually had materials in them. You can tell that, see that I can see that, like I can see this rock is highlighted. Um, that is because I've installed a mining subsystem that tells me, hey, by the way, there's iron in this, uh, in this asteroid and you can, you know, you can get that for free. So things like that, um, like those come in time and it's not super clear that those like kind of what feels like basic mechanics are going to become available to you as you play the game. Um, so it, in that sense, I, I really appreciate that Ivorian, you, you don't take things for granted too much. You know, you don't, you don't really start the game uh, with like a basic UI, even like certain UI things are uh, treated as re rewards. And um, I, I actually really appreciate that. Um, we'll get into how you build your ship in a second. That's kind of mining in a nutshell. Uh, you'll, you can look for uh, different rocks. I, something I do appreciate is that uh, the different minerals will look different. So like these are iron. Um, if I could go and find some titanium, that would be cool. Uh, let me, let's see if we can't go and find some titanium. Let's, uh, hey, this, this dot has 2,700 asteroids. So let's just go check out that like little zone in the middle of nowhere and see if we can find some titanium. But you know, it's kind of nice. I, I appreciate that um, every single kind of mineral or uh, metal in this game has a characteristic. So when you are mining, you can like very easily spot uh, something that looks like that thing. Now you might ask, well, okay, but you just said, wouldn't it be nice if you could scan the asteroids? Yeah, so that's an extra bonus thing is I didn't even know uh, for the longest time that these other asteroids, these other rocks had any metals or minerals or anything of value. Um, and it was only when I installed a uh, mining subsystem that it was like, hey, by the way, all of these other asteroids, they also have some fun stuff in them. So um, you should you should check that out. So that's I, I like the I like little surprises like that. OK, so that asteroid there has titanium. I can tell by the white marker. But I want to also highlight, I mean, this is like, you know, is mining interesting? I mean, when you're actually looking for materials, it, uh, it kind of matters. Like, am I just sitting around mindlessly shooting lasers at rocks? Well, no, not quite. Um, you know, sometimes it pays to go searching for the material you actually need. So this is what titanium looks like. And I, I really appreciate that titanium kind of has this uh, geometric shape. It's a, it's a characteristic of specifically titanium. I actually haven't seen anything above that. I'm still very new at the game, but like I, I, I wanted to showcase this game even while I'm still early in it because it's going to take me a long time before I get to unlock other major mechanics in the game. Like this game's got a lot. It's got fleet management. You can, you can manage multiple ships at once. It's got station management, which is a big big plus for me i i like i honestly feel like so many space games overlook that uh feature of like allowing the player to establish a station and this game does it really well as far as i've the research i've i've done is you can establish specific kinds of stations and where you establish them actually uh means they'll profit you more or less and also the kind of station you uh, establish, meaning like, you know, uh, does it mine? Does it create, so you know, solar cells, for example? Does it, uh, is it a farming station? Things like that is gonna matter depending on its location, I think. Um, I can't speak fully on that because I haven't done it yet myself yet, but uh, I just love that that stuff is, is there. Um, like you can establish a station and then I have to assume you can design it as well like much like I've designed my ship so um, 
yeah this is uh, this is mining um you can do it for profit or you can do it to improve your ship so let's uh as soon as i've finished mining this titanium here this is taking a while basically uh, based on my equipment, I, I could stand to have more equipment. You can also install more turrets to make things quicker. But uh, this is what we've got right now. So how come that is not... Oh, there we go. Hold on. Let's... Uh, I actually appreciate the, the camera, the way you control the camera in this game works well. Okay. No, I don't want to be pointing down. I actually want to be pointing at... I thought uh, if I had just pointed at it, I suppose I could target it. No, 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 not build. There we go. Too far. Okay, we're too far away from it. There we go. Um, there's things with turrets. Uh, they can like auto fire as well as like fire specifically. There's no more titanium over there, but I don't want to do too much mining because that's got to be as fun as watching grass paint. I don't know. Um, so let's go and find something of interest uh we can do some combat and let's let's go find one of these search and rescues the way uh like by the way cargo is a thing it's an interesting thing i i it took me a while to well not a huge time amount of time but it took me some time to figure out how it worked because it's not really straightforward um when you gather certain kinds of resources, like for example, the titanium I just gathered, uh, it can show up either as a raw mineral or as a resource. So when it collects as a resource like this, this is the kind of resource that you can build with. And I can like, you know, place more blocks on my ship that, that costs that kind of titanium. That does not actually take up any cargo space, as far as I can tell. As far as I can tell, it's completely free and it's even weightless. Um, when it's a resource and you can even sell that so it's just pure profit in terms of like uh, How much space it's taking up on your ship? Uh, the reason that that is becoming um, purely a uh, Resource is actually because of the turrets that I use so I use uh, purifying mining lasers and these will actually um, They have a refining trait. I believe uh, yeah, they that refinement blue text there I almost pointed in real life as if you can see my actual hand um, So when it has a refinement trait like that that means it's turning the raw resource directly into a Collectible resource if I didn't have that if I for instance had a lower tier mining laser uh, these are purifying as well, but they're probably less efficient uh, but like say no even that derelict mining laser has one it's that you're actually kind of hard pressed to find a mining laser that doesn't have refinement it's maybe one of the few criticisms i do have is that like i took for granted almost immediately that um i always collected minerals as a raw resource is there anything here? It doesn't look like it. Okay, so this is nothing. So let's go check out this other search and rescue. It might be that these have been sitting around for too long and so I kind of missed my chance. Um, yeah, so it, it, like I actually kind of wish you could work up to refinement lasers. Maybe I've been very lucky in that I've gotten a lot of them that just turn minerals into raw or uh, into, you know, pure resource. But, uh, you know, either way, it's kind of nice. I guess I don't have to worry about that aspect. But when you're trading, uh, anything that you buy, any kind of resource in that sense, like, for instance, the energy cells that I sell, sold do take up cargo space. Uh, and that means you have to have cargo on your ship, like cargo, cargo hold. Um, okay, so we've got a person over here. I'll just finish my thought on in terms of that. Like, this is where, like, building your ship actually matters how you build your ship your cargo hold is limited to how much cargo hold or cargo bay blocks you actually put on your ship and you can see i've put two sizable chunks of cargo uh bay on our ship so you know that matters and then this like this is where ship building actually has an effect you know you're 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 designing you're putting on your engines you're deciding how much engines you have um, your thrusters dictate the direction, like how fast your ship turns around and even slows down. Uh, you can't actually put engines pointing forward. It's one of the first things the game teaches you, which 
I, I think is a little odd, but I, it's it's a restriction and that means that you have to work with uh, thrusters. So that, you know, that's fine. Uh, energy containers dictate how long, how much energy you can hold. I mean, that makes sense. Then you have generators that dictate how quickly you recoup your energy. Uh, you can also put on solar panels, which I think is kind of amazing. I've actually, one thing I'd, I'd almost like to do is, um, I, I've been recently inspired by like, uh, some like genuine um, kind of like ship sloop uh, like models in real life. I was kind of thinking it would be really cool to like design a ship with like solar panel uh, sails. The their direction doesn't really matter, but it does say that you can say the the block profits from surface area, not volume. So you actually do benefit more from making huge flat solar panels as opposed to like big old blocks like these generators. Uh, and then you also have to have uh, things like crew quarters because you do have a crew. I think this is a fairly new mechanic um, in the grand scheme of things is that crew is a thing. Your crew will, um, like, given enough time, I think they actually, like, level up. Or at least mine seem to have. Oh, we have, like, uh, it might be dictated, I think, by how many you have. So, like, I have five gunners and therefore... Uh, that means that we spe they specialize and they they have a, a small perk, um, but you gotta pay them. You you gotta manage them. You don't have to manage them too much. The game has an auto uh, assign, which I take advantage of. So you can just have like a basic crew of like just people, and then depending on what you have on your ship, will uh, they'll just get, kind of get shuffled around to what needs what what needs more people. So we've got some wreckage. We lost our ability to navigate and we need some help. Mayday, mayday, we need it. And we had an explosion. Okay, so what's what's your deal? Scan the wreckage. Ship seems empty. There's no heat registering on your scanners and all crew aboard is frozen stiff. Ah, energy generator looks torn apart. It may have released toxic fumes into the air system. The only working thing is the automatic help message you received. Check message system. To whoever finds this message, please bring the information home to our families. They need to know about our fate. Okay, so we've got a new mission. Search and rescue. Uh, find other members of the Emirate of Chowapti and tell them uh, what you found. There's some possible locations that uh, I assume have been marked on the map. Nope, that's new information. Um, where is this? Uh, home Private note, home sector. Your ship is under attack. Whoa, what? Oh, no. So there's some pirates here. All right, well, we'll do some combat. That means I'm gonna have to tr uh, switch my turrets around. These are mining turrets. So let's go ahead and throw on some, I've been meaning to test these out. These are big boy, uh, double E chain gun, like big, big guns. And I've been uh, wanting to try them out. So let's throw those on. Let's throw on, oh, not enough slots for arm. I thought I had more room for slots. I need to check that out. I have, Okay, I guess I only have one sus subsystem, but it says auto turret slots. Oh, that only gives us auto turret slots. It doesn't actually give us turret slots. Uh, auto turret slots plus three, auto turrets plus six. Unarmed turret slots. Civil turret control system. Add slots for unarmed turrets. Okay, so I, I think I need to find some different... Ah, here we go. Turret control subsystem. All around tur turret control system add slots for any turrets. Okay, so I, I might need to find some more turret control systems. Right now I only have enough room for two, but we'll work with what we've got. I have to assume they're pretty good. Um, they're shooting torpedoes at me. I can shoot them out of the sky. Ooh. Trying to... Oh, that's doing some damage to me. Okay, let's... We gotta... Deal with this guy. Because he's shooting torpedoes. I've got pretty good guns, so he's not really equipped to dealing with them. And my turning is actually pretty good, too. So I can basically strafe around him. I think he did have a energy shield. So that's the torpedoes dealt with. Let's deal with this guy next. This is the uh, 
problem with coming to a middle of nowhere uh, station subsystem is you have the potential to be attacked. Looks like we're going to be totally fine, though. They drop a bunch of stuff. This is another one of those things like I was saying, oh, you know, it's really kind of a pain how like. Wait, is there more? No, it doesn't seem to be. Uh, I kind of wish there's like, you know, uh, it wouldn't I wouldn't have to walk right up to or I guess fly right up to these parts. But this is another subsystem that you can install that installs a better tractor beam and um, you can basically like suck up goods from space a little bit quicker. Also, uh, and I've been meaning to try this out actually, is they we have a salvaging, I have a salvaging beam and I would like to salvage the rest of these goods. So let's see here, purifying salvaging laser. Let's try this out. This is the first time I've been able to try this out. So this isn't just like for this circumstance, there's actually so systems with um, like a recycler station that are like filled with derelict ships. Um, not enough room for in your torpedo storage. Okay, so those are missiles that we can't store. Uh, and so you, if, if you want to start salvaging ships, you're going to want a salvaging laser. But also, uh, like I say, it's not just for salvaging ships that you've destroyed. It's also for uh, certain subsystems where you can take advantage. You, can, you have to buy a license for a certain amount of time. And which I, I think is actually really funny. Um, and then they let you salvage basically like these huge fields of derelict ships. So it looks like from this I get more credits for my effort. This is the first time I've used this. We're, we're getting through all those parts pretty quickly. And if I was playing on my own, I would go ahead and, you know, spend some time going through all those. It looks like I'm not getting a lot, but also these, um, these ships don't really feel all that, uh, strong. I suppose I could salvage the ship that, uh, is, uh, doing the, the distress beacon. You also, I, I should say, I don't, I don't know how much this matters, but if you're worried about, like, how sh the ship flies... You do have a pretty decent freedom of movement. You can do like up, down, left, right, strafing, rotation. Um, I could, you know, rotate left and right. I don't want to make you sick, but you know, you can do it. Um, so you have pretty good options in terms of like how you want to orient your ship. Let me just burn through this ship and then we'll go and see if we can't uh, make progress on this quest. It didn't look like I had markers on their map, but also those, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned that that those coordinates lead to very far away. Let's see here. Uh, I need 81464. 81464. So 81. Oh no, we're pretty close by 464. Okay. So that right there is uh, one coordinate we're going to go to. We can go check that out. And, you know, like, this is the thing, uh, you know, the missions in this game are actually pretty compelling. They're given to you at a good pace. Uh, they don't feel, you know, they don't feel like pushovers, but they also don't feel like um, super punishing. I can, I find that these kind of games can feel so punishing where like almost anything can slap you down. Uh, I haven't felt this that for this game. In fact, I mean, because of the way I've designed my ship, um, it's felt like uh, I, I give, gave myself enough speed to uh, get away from most dangerous situations. So 81464 doesn't seem to be anything. 81464. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything here. Okay. So next is 83459. 83... Four, five, nine. I suppose those are going to be the other laser, uh, like those other dots, aren't? Isn't it? Um, 
in terms of like my criticisms or like where i think that the game could use a little bit of work is strangely enough though the editor is very good i do find it kind of lacking if you want to design anything that isn't big and blocky like believe it or not doing this slight curve in the front was an immense amount of work like maybe i'm just bad but also i found it really cumbersome it would be really cool if uh some like almost blender-esque uh tools were added added to the game that would let you um kind of work with vertices and like connect some vertices up so that uh you were able to create more kind of curves and uh slants that met up like you could still work on a grid like i, I guess i would like a uh you know an in-between right as it is right now the game is very voxely in how you build your ship but i really don't i i can't believe the game is actually rendering in voxels maybe i'm wrong about that but it just doesn't feel like the case so i i do feel like the game could let you work with vertices but uh i you know i'm not a programmer and i don't know how this game does it so maybe i'm completely off base on that one um but it's still it's like if you want to do slants and stuff it actually feels like there's maybe a, a lack of blocks um in terms of like you know how how you can build your ship so i wouldn't mind seeing a few more options when it comes to like how you're building your your ship but um it's not a deal breaker by any means i still was able to make this ship and i'm pretty happy with its design i think it looks really cool um I learned most of like how I designed my ships from a YouTuber I want to shout out called Gary007. They have some really decent tips and um, they actually put me onto this whole like uh, way of designing ships where instead of like, you know, building the ship like component by component, um, what you do is you create a uh, sub, like a, a, a cut or when I'm trying to think of what the term is, but basically you create a slice of a ship. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let me just get this here. So you create a slice of your ship. I'm gonna undo this, but uh, just to illustrate it. Uh, can only be built with a fa Oh, right, I, don't, I can't build on that at a shipyard. But if you can see, like this is the the basic body shape of my ship and it's made up of lots of miniature voxels so it's really like you know it's it's very much um the maximum number of parts that you that you want uh and that this will add more customization options later but then you use your view to uh look at the inside so like originally um when i was first building my ship this these were made up of uh basically framework so i could look at just framework and then start converting the framework into the parts i need so it's like i need a certain amount of thrusters i need a certain amount of crew quarters and uh, you basically convert the interior of your ship into the components and into as much of those components as you want and you can even get very specific about it so for instance integrity field generators they cast a field around your ship so you don't need to have huge blocks of them you just need a couple of them to uh to cover your bases so like i mean like yo this block this block this block create an integrity field generator if you want a uh, a better breakdown uh, maybe a better ex explanation of what i'm talking about definitely check out gary 007's uh youtube he's got a lot of very insightful videos for how to play this game much better than i am probably showing off but i want to show this game off as you know if i can energy generator looks torn apart it may have released toxic fumes in the air system check the message system um all right so that is another of the chow apti tell them what you found out i think that is that the same ship so this is 83459 so i want to find 8453 80 four five three is down there find other members of the emirate choapti okay let's see if i can complete this mission and then i'll probably call it for this there's so much more though there's so much more there's factions 
um there's a lot of different kinds of equipment there's turret designing like you can design your own turrets i think it might just be for aesthetics but I, i'm really not sure like there's a lot um definitely you can make things a lot easier on yourself by like figuring out some methods for building this doesn't look like there's anything here 8453 hmm i'm not i'm not sure what the mission is you received an emergency gun your ship's sensors were unable to trace their exact position, but it produced these possible locations. Well, it really seems like, uh, there's no one out here. Well, I really wanted to complete that mission, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. All right, well, I'll just head home. Um, I did get it. There's a bunch of DLC for this game. I should say I grabbed uh, black market, which was like six bucks This game is like 30 Canadian. So it's a bit on the pricey side, but I do think it's worth it and there's actually a freebie DLC uh, It looked like there was not great reviews for uh, Explore the rift which I think is on the newer side of their DLCs I think it's it's got a couple of kinks to work out but I, if they can uh, turn it around, I might grab that as well. Um, I've done, I've started doing the black market DLC. There's some story missions as well as a, a bunch of like extra mechanics regarding uh, stolen goods and illegal goods. And you can basically have, I think, special cargo holds or like special uh, illegal goods licenses that let you do some kind of like shady trading. So that's kind of cool. Um, I actually really do appreciate that, like they're doing this on a, you know, they're doing it on a DLC basis. And I think that that's totally fine and reasonable um, considering the, the breadth of this game. Uh, I would like to see them continue to develop it. I, I think that this game uh, could still stand to improve, but uh, what is here is, is very playable and very fun as far as I'm concerned. And multiplayer, I mean, it really should be said. I, I haven't tried multiplayer. But um, you can run your own server, and uh, and I, I like who knows that, that could be a lot of fun doing put a, put together a squad and and go do some PVE uh, do some even like space trucking together I think that could be a lot of fun. But uh, in any case, this was Avorian. You'll find a link in the description. I have a lot of things to say about this game, and most of them are very good. I, I've had very few complaints honestly, and. For me, I'm very picky about my space games, but uh, this one, this one was a treat. So, uh, you know, throw me your questions in the comments because I know that this is the kind of game like I, uh, I had a lot of um, potential grievances. I wasn't sure if it was something I was going to enjoy, and uh, having done done a little bit of effort, put a little bit of effort into playing it, I'm, I'm you know, I've I've learned enough to know maybe what are some of the pitfalls. So if you have any concerns, uh, throw them in the comments and I'd be happy to address them. And um, definitely check this game out. If you have checked it out, also let me know if uh, maybe I said something incorrect. Uh, if it, maybe there's some tips you'd like to share with me. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.